Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup, and today we have an excellent show in the Linux news. We are uh, featuring a few fun stories that give me a little bit of nostalgia for the start of this channel. I'll explain what that might be about. And of course, uh, wait before you upgrade Ubuntu. Just a warning. So uh, let's go ahead and dive on into the news. First up, Vim Developers Group, uh, which lately they've been using on Google Groups, has been banned by Google. Google uh, for uh, allegedly spam or whatever else. It's Vim. You can't even spam that fast. Um, but uh, anyway, the um, the group is banned, and there's no way. And the the uh, person here who was on the the list giving us a, an update uh, just says it's completely removed. You can't find it unless you're explicitly logged in and part of it. And they say, you know, they can pursue a legal claim in court if they want anything to do with that. Now, Nick Croft here has a, uh, has an interesting comment. Remember the good old days when Vim was sent out using Mutt, which uses Vim as a text generator and it was hosted at Vim.org. Just a small note, even it seems slightly inconvenient, it is always best to host your own resources yourself as much as you possibly can because if you don't host it yourself you know what we have issues like this and this exactly is is the problem with relying on external services like google in this case here and so uh i guess the people that were on uh, on the vim newsletter list hopefully uh you guys can figure out another solution there hopefully everyone gets the word out and you guys get uh moving to a better source soon uh, NeoFetch is dead. It is now archived on GitHub. So uh, according to this here, now they stopped doing code updates around 2020 and they stopped re uh, responding to any uh, requests or anything else uh, since then. And so the basically the project has been in a non-active state for a while it is finally archived now of course neofetch is still going to continue to work if it is installed although most likely many distros will start looking for other alternatives unfortunately there are a few forks of this that are still working of course uh, this is the thing that gives you a nice uh, and just a nice readout you get a nice beautiful logo using very ascii key characters and then an entire system readout of what you got a lot of the more terminal-focused guys will use it to highlight their videos, kind of to illustrate what they're working with. I should probably use it more now that it's dead, of course, because I never update stuff. Uh, but anyway, I'm kidding. I do. I do. But uh, it is now archived, so uh, it's going to continue to work, but probably going forward we're going to start seeing other alternatives. There are some high fetches mentioned over here. There's also... Um, uh, is it Neo Neo Fetch, uh, which is spelled a little bit different, I guess. <laughs> uh, so there's a couple of different options you have, or is that the same tool? I don't know. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I don't use uh, Neo Fetch a whole lot. But uh, let's see. They say down here you can see an OS-based color scheme by running Neo Fetch instead, which is the same tool, different colors. Okay. So Neo Fetch with spelling different is different. Is uh, the same application, but a uh, high fetch will effectively do the same thing. Thing, and that is, I believe, still in active development. And there are some other tools as well. So goodbye, NeoFetch. I do love their little skull picture here. That is beautiful. And, of course, uh, we covered this in the Linux Mint news, uh, uh, not yesterday, the day before on Wednesday, but I wanted to go ahead and list it here. Linux Mint is testing a new CDN-based repository. So, of course, if you install Linux Mint and you go into the Upgrade Manager, you might see an option there, a little big blue box up there that says Update Your your mirrors, and then you go over to the software sources and you sort the mirrors and you find one closest to you. So what they are actually doing now, and they're in beta testing, is there are they are using the Fastly content delivery network, and this will allow them to have one place in their repository, and then in theory that should work equally well anywhere in the world. So you can go ahead and test this out in the beta right now if you're running Linux Mint, 
by first you want to go back and set your software uh, sources back to the default, which is going to go back to packages.linuxmint.com. And then in your terminal, you're going to want to edit the Etsy app sources.list.d slash official package repositories.list. And then you're going to replace packages.linuxmint.com with fastly.linuxmint.io. Get rid of that.com. And then this is going to allow you to keep that same rep uh, repo, but anywhere in the world, you're going to get a really close CDN delivery of your repository instead of relying on uh, their central one, which was based in Chicago or the other ones around the world. Now, I did raise a couple of potential concerns or questions about this, and that is their utilization of their uh, their statistics is done by by collecting data through. It is a very privacy focused group with a lot of configuration on the company itself. But if you're using their repo, it is possible this is one of the places that they're using to grab statistics of uh, of their resources. I am not 100 percent sure about that. So that revolves some extra examination. Just reading over their statistics platform. And then this, it almost reads like if you're using this, you might be part of the statistics. If not, then you're not part of it. Of course, they've previously just taken statistics by the number of people landing on the default Linux Mint homepage on the default Firefox on the operating system. And so that's how they've done statistics in the past. But it, just reading how they're doing statistics, it does sound like they can pull some statistics off of this. Again, I am not sure if that is true or not. These are just open thoughts that I have and uh, things that might be worth asking questions just because I want a little bit of transparency. Now, they are very transparent at Linux Mint. Uh, so uh, Clem might have responded to that thought down the road. But overall, I put one of my computers on this test repository and I've not seen packages update so fast in my life. It's worked really well. So looking forward to that down the road and um, uh, we'll see what happens here. Now again to the little bit of nostalgia because the very first video I had that gained any traction on this channel, probably if I didn't do this video, my channel may not exist to this day. I might have been another Linux YouTuber that started up and never got more than, you know, a hundred subscribers and no views and anything else as I did a video saying Ubuntu is not going to successfully launch with Unity 8 because they were launched, they were going to get Unity 8 launch. Was it 24? Uh, what was that? Was it seventeen ten or was it uh, or was it sixteen ten? I think it was sixteen ten. Maybe it was seventeen oh four. They were like, "We're gonna get Unity eight launch." And I did this video, and I was like, "This does not work. It will not work. They are not gonna get this on their time zone." And not only like two weeks after I did that video, they're like, "We're dropping Unity and going back to GNOME." And I'm like, "I'm a prophet." And I that is the first video I had that really gained a ton of traction and gave me that first boost of subscribers. So cool. Thanks. Uh, you can owe this channel to Ubuntu and Unity 8. Now, Unity 8 has thus been forked over into the uh, the phone ROM system and the mobile operating system world. And I got to say, I love the look of it on the Pine phone. It is slow as molasses, but it works really well. So I think if you gave it a lot more system resources than the development edition of the, uh, the Pine phone that I have, it probably would work really well. Uh, so now as part of the new flavors, we actually have a flavor that is based on Unity 8. Now also a reminder, there is a flavor based on Unity 7. So if you liked Ubuntu in the old days of Unity, you can still get an official Ubuntu flavor with Unity 7. But this marks the first time we have an official flavor with Unity 8. Eight. So I am actually going to have a look at this soon because I would really would like to see, did they fix some of the issues? I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to that really old video in there and ex evaluate, did the things that I mentioned in that video, have they been fixed? <laughs> that would be good to know. So this is a little bit of a nostalgia for me, and I am looking forward to having a look at it. Now, of course, this is exactly what uh, this looks like. If I take my Pine phone and I dock it into the computer monitor, this is exactly what I see. So it is effectively the same thing on the 
uh, on the phone. Now, it's not really designed for a desktop environment, uh, like, like for a full computer. Although if you had like a touch screen or a, one of these flip tablets, it might actually be a good compelling operating system to run. Uh, that'd be a neat thing to test uh, if I could get my hands on one of the old flip computers or something. So that's kind of neat, but that is um, uh, Lamiri. Is it Lomiri, I think is how it's pronounced. So you can go ahead and have a look at that, and uh, that's kind of fun. And look at this. They're running NeoFetch at it. Isn't that beautiful? Um, sorry, NeoFetch. You were nice while you lasted. Okay. And on to our last article, why you should not upgrade to Ubuntu 2404 yet. I am not saying Ubuntu 2404 is garbage. What I am saying is that it is still possible for you to go and do the dist upgrade. You might find a reference to that. Oh, you want to upgrade to the new version because you hear Ubuntu 2404 is out and stable. And uh, you don't want to you know, wait for them to release the official upgrade channel. So you might go to your dist upgrade and... Um, uh, sudo do release upgrade is what it is. Uh, the this this is the syntax, and then that would upgrade your previous version to the new version. The problem is, is that there are a lot of weird things under the hood that they have not resolved yet on upgrade, and that's why we don't have an official upgrade path yet. Now, there will be an official upgrade path, so stay tuned for that. Uh, you will see that. Don't try to force your system to upgrade yet. If you're still on a previous version of Ubuntu, wait until you see that show up in the uh, in the desktop environment GUI. Don't try and force it. The biggest reasons, number one, is they removed Thunderbird and replaced it with a snap package that could cause data loss if you're uh, if you're trying to migrate from one to the other until they figure this out. The other major one is Ubuntu 2404 fixes the Y 2028 time transitions issue, and uh, that is, that is uh, apparently there's a more complicated way around that. So if you attempt to do the upgrade without them working out the bugs of officially doing the upgrade, you're going to cause a lot of weird things, and then your computer's going to become a con time traveler before you know it, some TARDIS from Doctor Who is going to be out there attacking you. So don't do that. Wait until, uh, just go ahead and wait until you see that GUI option to upgrade Ubuntu. Now, if you do want to run 2404 right now, don't do upgrade it. Make a full backup of all of your data, wipe your drive, install 2404, and then add your data back on. That's going to be your safest way to do it. Just wait for that. And I think the 2404 does bring some neat things to the table. Of course, I don't like their their approach of pushing all of the snaps everywhere, but I don't say that Ubuntu is so horrible. Nobody should ever use it. It is a good, compelling uh, Linux distribution to try, but don't try and upgrade to it until you actually get that upgrade path in there. So uh, we just want to prevent data loss and all sorts of other weird stuff going on. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page. You can jump on over there, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. That will support all of the different channels. Maybe I should take that writing channel off. I'm not actively writing over there anyway. But you can join 73 people over there on Patreon. And uh, we have... Uh, of course, uh, if you were over there, you'd know we did not have a show last night. Uh, but we did have a hangout for anybody that is a supporter. Those are over there. And then uh, we also have short stories. Our last one, people said that was one of the best short stories that I had. That was called Central Bank Digital Control. You can jump on over there. Of course, if you jump over to Locals, you can read the first part of that without paying um, so that's just as a, a free member over there on Locals. That's at switchtolinux.locals.com. With that, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.